My next guest is the Emmy award-winning journalist who hosts The Beat with Ari Melber. Please welcome Ari Melber. Nice to meet you. Thanks for being here. Great to be here. Now, are, are you, we, we taped the show a little earlier in the day. Are you about to do your show, or have you done your show? I skipped my show for you, Stephen. What? <laughs> wow, I robbed, I robbed the American people of their, of their nightly Melbourne. It's weird, because we had RuPaul booked. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> sorry, I scooped you. Now, you're MSNBC's chief legal correspondent, besides hosting your own show. Um, it's great to have an expert. You know, on right now because there's a there's a legal question that I have and it's a bit technical. Um, it's the hell is going on right now? <laughs> what is is are there laws? Are there still laws, Ari Melber? House Judiciary votes tomorrow uh, to see if Barr should be held in contempt because Barr said I'm not going to come testify. They subpoenaed him and he said, you know, subpoena Shmina, I'm not coming. <laughs> What happens if they, uh, if they uh, hold him in contempt? Anything? Well, here's what's going on. Bob Mueller found evidence that Donald Trump committed five felonies in office. Mm -hmm. Congress subpoenaed, as you mentioned, the rest of the Mueller report. Mm -hmm. Aren't there ten examples of uh, probable obstruction? Ten examples of obstruction and then about five or seven, depending on, on how you count, where Mueller said there was, quote, substantial evidence of all the things you need to make it a crime. Oh, okay, okay. And then Barr says, no, I'm not going to share it with you, and I'm going to skip the hearing. And then the Congress says, we may hold you in contempt to force you to come in court. Mm -hmm. And some people in Congress are thinking about impeaching the president. So there's a, a couple things going on. But what happens... <laughs> but wait, I understand that part, but, like, if they say, you are in contempt, Bill Barr, and then what? So what? Like, do they, does the, the executive branch of Barr go, uh, good for you? Or can something happen to them? Are there fines? Is there jail time? When someone's in contempt of Congress, can't they go to jail? So when normal people are held in contempt, they go to jail immediately, like in My Cousin Vinny, yep. where the lawyer... <laughs> sure. Same hour, right very off the similar, day. Very similar circumstances here, for, yes. <laughs> for, for some reasons that are good reasons, the president, the attorney general, aren't in that normal people category, but it's a real thing because... Once Congress holds that vote, it sends it to the courts where an independent judge can rule and can force either the documents to come out or those other sanctions you're talking about. But how do you force it? What's the enforcement mechanism? You know, uh, you know what is it? What did, was it, John Mar uh, was it uh, Andrew Jackson said? You know, the Supreme Court has passed the ruling, now let them enforce it? So how is it enforced? This is a question you've been circling here on this show. I mean, I saw you talk I, to Emily Bazelon about but it. But I'm really curious, because isn't that the, the height of a... Isn't that the definition of a constitutional crisis? You get to a position where the Constitution did not deal with this level of obstruction, and, and the system breaks down. I would put it in two categories. If what you want is controlled solely by the president, mm -hmm. you can end up in that crisis, and that's a problem. Most of these things don't depend on the president alone. So if... You were talking about the monologue. If... They lose in court the battle over Trump's tax returns. Yes. He's not the only person holding them. They're not just under his bed. <laughs> there are other people, accounting firms, the IRS, that have them. And those people could be jailed in real time in a way the president can. Okay. And our system in that way forces other people to follow the order. Now, McConnell today said... <laughs> that would be nice. Consequences. <laughs> Applause. Exactly. Applause for the Constitution, Stephen. Well, I, I think people are thirsty for any consequences. Because you see... You see abuse of power. Well, you see abuse of power and some people, of constitutional norms in broad daylight and nothing seems to happen. Right. And some people are just thirsty. That's why they post so many pictures <laughs> online. That's true. Now, McConnell said today, case closed on Mueller. Trump tweeted on Sunday, Mueller should not testify. Uh, does Trump have the legal ability to stop uh, Mueller from testifying even when he's not, uh, no longer a DOJ employee? No, not even a little bit. Okay. So Mueller will testify at some point, in your opinion, your guess. The Congress can subpoena him, yep. and there would be almost no valid way to stop him from testifying. Okay. 
what do the people over at the uh, People's Republic of MSNBC say? Do they, <laughs> do you and your colleagues think impeachment's a good idea? What's the vibe over there? The vibe? What's the vibe over at MSNBC? <laughs> if I can use jazz terms right here, <laughs> what is the vibe over there? Impeach uh, or no impeach? I think there is substantial evidence in the Mueller report that the president committed crimes in office. So you say impeach? So that is a thing <laughs> that's... It's a bad thing. That's a, th a bad thing? It's a bad thing. You know what? I'll go further. It's a bad thing, Stephen. Okay, great. That's a thing that the report provides evidence of. And then the Congress has to decide whether they're going to do anything about it. I think it is fascinating and kind of silly uh, that the Democrats in Congress have talked for so long about wanting to get Mueller's report they got it, and it wasn't like one felony, which wouldn't be okay. Like, that's not cool. But it was several felonies in the report, and now they're saying, well, we don't want to impeach because of politics. I don't think that's a good reason to do anything, really. <laughs> but... And there's always a but after the applause. It's up to Congress and the country to figure that out. I mean, we're not reporting it out gunning for one outcome. Really? <laughs> yeah. You guys don't advocate at all over at MSNBC? You guys, come on, you guys bang a drum over there sometimes. We definitely have people who are affiliated with causes and parties and our analysts, and some people are okay. making the case. Okay. Um, but, I mean, if, can I just talk about the beat? Sure. Instead of the whole, the whole thing? Sure, of course, yeah. On the beat... It's the only no show I care about right now. <laughs> On the beat, we're not advocating for an outcome. Okay, good. Good. Ari, thank you so much for being here. The beat with Ari Melber airs weeknights on MSNBC. Ari Melber, everybody.